I am Phoenix Jackson, and after 18 years as an award-winning business leader, I'm here to share, guide, and inspire you on your journey upward and inward. I want you to live an empowered existence because you deserve it. This is a spiritual space for those seeking to make a difference in their lives and the lives of others. We will talk life design, healing, spirituality, and business. I'm sharing what I know to be true. Thank you for being here. Let's go within. Hello. Hi. Okay. I'm still in my hometown, Denver, Colorado, but I decided like, let me get this video to y'all before I head out on this airplane because I um, have been a bit busy and I do apologize. Um, I missed our, um, I missed my last Thursday's upload. I still have so much footage and so much that I still need to bring in from like that trip to Japan that I wanted to show you guys. Um, but I've been in the middle of travel and I've been in the middle of onboarding a few new employees. And I've also been in the middle of like this very good speaking engagement that just took place in my hometown here in Denver. And, you know, it's something to be said about like being home, being where your tribe is, seeing old faces, seeing new faces, just making connections, the smiles, the hugs. It's been so much love, so, so much love. And if you look in the shorts, you'll see like some of the content and some of the videos. And then of course, um, I'll be putting some stuff up online and again, that I'll need to edit and put together that will like show you guys a little bit about what the whole event was about. Um, it was the Empower 24 Wealth and Wellness Conference. So we had myself, Queen of Fua, um, 19 Keys. We had uh, Elijah Smith, who's a, a brilliant young man who put it together out in Denver. Um, we have just some people who are speaking about holistic wellness, the crypto bully that is like making sure you get your Bitcoin in alignment. Just so many cool people were at the summit and were there to spread light and were there to educate and were there to make sure that the public knows that they can release out of the traps that they're in. They can separate themselves from the things that, you know, have pulled them down in the past. And actually, one good thing that a lot of the speakers did, including myself, was like provide practical approach to getting things done. Like what could be your next steps? So it was awesome. I'm excited. And one thing I wanted to come and talk to you all about is the power of tribe, right? And what is a tribe? Your tribe are the people around you that help fortify you even when times are dark. Your tribe are your friends that truly care about you. Your tribe are those people in your life who are not going to let you lie to yourself. When you're like, oh, I can get away with doing this. I can do this. I can do that. Whatever. They are the ones in your life who are like, no, this is what you should be doing. Or no, girl, uh -uh, that ain't going to work. I need you to look at this a little bit more clearly. They're the ones that are going to remind you when you're not being honest with yourself. You're not being honest to others. They're the ones who are going to remind you of your greatness and the things that you have promised yourself. Your tribe are the people around you that support you in your growth. They support you in your elevation. They support you in you trying to dig a little bit deeper in who you are becoming. And a lot of times, you know what, our tribe can be tough on us. You know, our tribe can tell us things that we know to be true, but that we don't want to hear. And that's okay too, right? That's okay. But the people who really care about you, they're going to tell you the stuff that you don't want to hear. The people that really love you, they're going to tell you things that are for your own betterment, unless they're unhealthy, unless you can't trust them. Then, of course, you probably shouldn't have them in your tribe in the first place. Our tribe is not just our family. Our tribe are our chosen family. Our tribe are the friends that have been in our life forever who help um, clear the brush when we need to see clearly along the path. Our tribe are those people who are a mere reflection of us. Know that like the top five people that are around you are a mere reflection of who you are. This is your own universe and you guys have decided to come into this life together to co-create. And what they're not doing right, you're probably not doing right. What they are doing right, you're probably doing right. A lot of our tribemen and our friends, our chosen ones are a reflection of something deep within us. I have friends around me who most of my closest friends are married. And then I have a few best friends and close friends who are not married. And, you know, many of them have children. And I believe that 
only me and one other of my closest friends are divorced with a child. The rest are either married or are single, no children, no husband, have never been married, any children. So everyone has been on their path. And some of them are entrepreneurs, like one of my girlfriends, uh, I'm not going to say her name, but her company just like stepped into seven figures last year. And I'm so excited for her. And she's going to continue to make that money because uh, she's in a great field in construction. She's going to continue to fly, which I have another video talking about the construction industry and how like a lot of the millionaires I know are actually in that field. They're in development, construction, um, a little bit in real estate, but really construction, which is much broader than real estate. And she's doing well. And I have friends who are creatives. I have tribesmen who are creatives. Like they know how to just make candles and they know how to, you know, paint and they know how to dance and they know how to sing and they're artists, they're famous actresses and they just do their thing. And I love that because everyone's deciding how they're going to share their purpose. And nobody in my circle are the same. None of my girlfriends have the same careers. None of them have the same lives. Um, none of my guy friends either have the same careers and same lives, which is crazy. Like now that I think about it, that my tribe is so diverse in how they show up and how they express themselves. And including me, like none of them are a me in our group, which I think is by design, right? Like I think that's by design. However, uh, these are the people that's, these are my tribesmen that are been like, like I said, here in Colorado and abroad. These are the people that have been in my life for the last 10, 20, 25 years. I think my oldest friend, honey, she was, it's three of them. I'm going to blow you blow you out. My friend Ellie, my friend Phoenix. Yes, I have a friend named Phoenix. <laughs> and my friend Ashley and my friend Ponder, actually, four. He's the guy. They've been, they've been my best friends, them four, for 26 years. Like, I knew them before I had, you know, these. <laughs> and so, and none of them are the same. And what I've noticed is that in this last probably two years, I've attracted women who are similar to me in their purpose of how they show up in the world. Like my girl, Cheryl Dorsey, and my girl, Lee Cherie's, uh, my girl, Jerry Johnson, my, like, we, my girl, Lakeisha French, I'm throwing y'all's names out, <laughs> y'all my bays. Uh, these women have come into my life who are similar to me. You know, my, my friends, my day ones are very different, but we are soul connects, right? Like those are my, we came in, I feel like we were born to find each other and be amongst each other forever. And then my new friends, I feel like they came in during a time where I needed real mirror reflections of me and my journey so that I can fine tune Phoenix, right? So my old tribe, who are obviously still are still at my tribe. I was with one this morning for breakfast. My old tribe supports the the soul of who I have always been since I was a little girl. And the new tribe supports and is helping fine tune Phoenix as is because they're mirrors and we bounce things off of each other and we 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 sit in sacred space with one another and are helping each other evolve, you know. Um, like one of my, one of my best friends who I'm actually at her home right now, she's been my friend, my friend, Christina, she's been my friend for like, I don't know, maybe like eight years, I think maybe six or eight years. And we have loved on each other in a space that's just so authentic and natural. And like, she tells me too, like, mm -mm, and I tell her like, mm -mm, girl, <laughs> and we tell each other the truth, but then we also give each other room to grow and share things and like really question each other about some of the decisions we make in our relationships in life, just to like really, you know, help each other evolve in this space in our womanhood. And I say all this to say that you deserve to have that tribe. I meet I meet people sometimes who are like, oh, I don't have any friends or I don't have a tribe. And I'm just like, wow, I, I find that to be a red flag, actually, because we all need a tribe, even if it's one other person. We need people who we we can love and nurture, and we need people who can love and nurture us. And I know some people are, who are like, I don't need anybody. I don't, and it's like, actually, you do. And your closed offness and your lack of creation in the world is a reflection of the fact that you don't have that tribe. And I used to be a person who believed that, like, oh, I can do things by myself. And it's like, yeah, 
I can because I'm a fire starter, but I need somebody who can stoke that fire and simmer that fire long term. I need people who can co-create with me because that's my weakness. My weakness is, is, you know, not nurturing the fire long term. Um, and I'll have another episode talking about fire starting and what type of flame are you. Um, but we, when, we, when we're looking to have a tribe, I want you to think about these three things as you're stepping out to find your tribe. Let's say you don't really have a tribe, or maybe let's say you're a little unhappy with the tribe that you have. There's some things that are missing or you don't feel like you're growing. These are the three things I want you to do to figure out or to develop the next tribe or to expand yourself beyond even where you are. One, I want you to accept that the people that are around you are a reflection of you. And if you have toxic people around you, it does not necessarily mean that you're toxic, but it means that there's a part of you that resonates with their toxicity, which is why they're still in your space. There's a part of you that are that is at home with that level of toxicity and chaos. There's probably that's at home with the financial space that you all kind of occupy. So the first step is just accepting, maybe writing down, like, this is where I currently am. And, the, and, and these are the, this is like, this is where I currently am. And this is what my tribe looks and feels like. Write down maybe the top three to five people in your life. Where, where are they mentally? Where are they emotionally? Where are they financially? And compare yourself to that and say, are you, are you in that space too? Are you uh, a mirror image of those people? You're, you probably are, more than likely you are. Number two, I want you to look at what are your personal aspirations? What do you want? Like if you can just snap your finger and make your life be a certain way that is actually attainable. I'm not talking about like, oh my God, I need to be on the private jazz. I need to be doing this. I need to be doing that. That's fine. But I want you to think from an aspirational standpoint, like what realistically do you want that you think is going to make you feel good about life? Is that being able to wake up whenever you want? in the morning and starting your day whenever you want. That's kind of my version of happiness. Is it um, being able to, you know, go be with your friends or spend time with other people a few times a week and you need to craft your life around that? What does it look like for you to have a space of comfortability? What does it look like uh, um, for you to feel good about life? What does that look like? Does it mean that you're reading every day? Like really think about that. And then think about what kind of people around you do you need to attain that? Do you need a friend around you who can teach you some business things? Do you need a friend around you who you can share about? You guys can read a book together and share that book. Like, hey, we just read chapter one. Let's talk about it. What do what does your ideal tribe look and feel like? Like when I think about I did this exercise for myself. And I thought about what does my ideal tribe look like? It's the people that are in my life now. I don't even know if I even need any new friends. I had to say that I was like, no new friends. I, I invite people into my space calculatively, you know, like, yeah, take my time with it. But my tribe is so efficient and so loving that I don't like, I don't need anybody else because I'm pretty whole in the people that are around me. But think about what do you need and what what would that tribe look and feel like? And the third thing is I want you to think about where are those type of people? If you kind of identify a need within yourself, or you're like, maybe I want more giving friends who are just naturally giving, buy you gifts, do things for you. Where would those type of people be? Where do you think you can meet those kind of people? If you want more intellectual friends, where do you think you can meet those type of people? It's not at the club on a, on a Wednesday night, right? It could be, but you're probably looking at people who are actually working. If they're in intellect, they're probably working and, you know, at home. So, Maybe you can connect with people online. Maybe you can find some Facebook groups in your city, right? Like I know Houston has different like Facebook groups of people who meet and greet in Houston. So I know that's in every major city, but think about where can you find those type of people? What kind of like get on Eventbrite or Meetup and really look at the interests that you have and look at the groups and people who are having those same interests and pop up, honey, do dip and do dip and do do a pop-up to those spaces and really become open with finding those new people who you guys can support each other on this this journey that we call life right 
a tribe is important. A tribe can open doors. A tribe can help soften the landing when you are going through hard times. All right. Um, and I feel like now more than ever, I have my authentic tribe around me. The people who didn't feel quite like my authentic tribe are all gone. And I have my authentic tribe around me. So, and man, and they don't let me get away with shit. <laughs> they don't. So um, thank you all for, for joining me today. Um, I wanted to just pop in on you and I'll be having more content, more information for you all later. Just want you to know I love you. And um, we are opening up the Phoenix Effect University in the next 30 days. I'll talk to you guys about that soon. Actually announced it for the first time with the, the, the audience of people that I spoke at a few days ago. And they all like joined. I literally, I think like 95% of the audience joined the mailing list for the university. So I'm pretty excited about that. And I can't wait to show you all what my team has been working on for you. But um, thank you for being here. And I will talk to you all soon. And please have a, a wonderful day, honey. Don't be afraid to dip and do. Don't be afraid to smile. Don't be afraid to go for what is for you. Because it's, it's, it's for you. Talk to you soon.